Welcome to Via Mateto in Tuscany, nestled in the bosom of the Italian mountains. The reason we've all come out here is because Mummy and Daddy are considering moving to either Italy or Portugal. They thought it would be a good idea to get a feel for the place before making any impulsive decisions. So we're staying a few days up this Italian mountain and then a few days by the beach to see which type of the location we like the most. Our neighbours for the next few days would be these three donkeys, Grumpy, Happy and Sweat. I came up with those names in case you're interested. But what we're excited about more than anything is feeling some sun on our skin. In the UK, it's been relentlessly dishing out a damp onslaught of cold sideways rain and drizzle for seven months straight. So that thought of the warm embrace of the Mediterranean sun casting its golden rays upon our palate, vitamin D starved, translucent newborn fish skin will be such a welcome respite from the watery prison that the UK has become. Oh, come on, you can't be serious. Lucky for us, unlike the UK, the rain in Italy doesn't want to hang around for seven months. It feels so good to have like warmth on you after seven months of just a brutal winter in the UK of just drizzle and rain for seven months to come somewhere where you can feel the sun on your face. It's like, oh, man, that's nice. It's what you need, man. It's what we need. We have spent the first couple of days, ooh, there's a donkey in the background. We spent the first couple of days of this trip living up this mountainside just to see if we do eventually move here, um, just to see what it's like to live up a mountain. So far, I love it, but you do feel a little bit stranded up here. That's all I would say. Waking up to that view is, oh, is just the most magnificent view to have in the morning. Um, and having your coffee on the balcony looking at that is, just like it doesn't even feel real it's just you just feel like it's so beautiful how can it even be real but anyway we're gonna walk back to our little place now and make some pasta nobody wants to hang out with rufus when he's hungry because it is horrific <laughs> what's the lunch hannah mags pasta I'm going to give you a little tour of our airbnb in the tuscany hills because it's so cute it's literally like something from like Beauty and the Beast or Rapunzel or something. It actually feels a little bit Rapunzel-esque because it's so remote. <laughs> it's really messy, but I love this sink. There's my chef. And then I'll take you through to the lounge area. The boys are just watching a cartoon while we wait for our food to be cooked. Look at the view. Mommy? Yeah. Can you hide your in the cupboard? Uh, in a minute, I'm just doing a little house tour. I'll help you in a sec. And then this bit is the bit that makes the whole trip for me. This view here. And we're about to have our lunch here. We've been eating all our breakfasts out here as well. Um, and there's loads of like bees and it smells amazing. Up these stairs. I think I made our bed. I did not make the kids' bed. So this is our room. isn't it so beautiful it's very Tuscan and then this in here is the sweet little bathroom this is the other bedroom this is where the boys have been sleeping so they've got their bed there and then they've got the view in the morning as well and that's it our rental car is this little uh Fiat thing and it is the most gutless, horrific car I've ever driven in my life. We're heading to somewhere called Pietra Santa in the city of Lucca today. Um, looks really pretty. 
we don't have anything else to do so we thought we'd go check out the city see if see if we like city life um, although I think Steph's a bit scared about driving back up the mountain afterwards but we've run out of like food <laughs> and coffee so we didn't really have a choice but to leave the mountain today but yeah we're gonna go check out the city and maybe take some pictures find some lunch stock up on um, some coffee, coffee. Came out today without coats, so now we are wet and cold. <laughs> it's bank holiday in Italy today, and we didn't realise. And there is literally nowhere, no shop open, to buy food. I mean, a few restaurants are open, but nowhere for us to buy food. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, we've got some pasta left over that we can feed the kids, but it looks like you and me might be fasting tonight. Yeah, we're going to. Not something I wanted to do on a holiday <laughs> in the land of pasta and pizza. The food here is insane. Food here is so good, isn't it? Oh man, it's so good. The whole culture in Italy seems to revolve around food. It seems to gravitate around the whole ceremony of eating. So they make such a big deal out of like just food and the preparation of food and everything's just so fresh and so tasty and delicious and they really care about the sauces. And they, uh, the one thing I don't understand is they, they, they give you just, just dry bread at the start before you eat any food. So like they'll just, they'll put like a basket of just, with no butter, no oil, just dry bread. I don't get that. I'm a bit like, what are you doing Italians? You need some sort of like, you need something with this. You can't just give me dry bread. Yeah, I'm so on board, but unfortunately, I don't, we're not gonna be able to get any food anywhere, are we? Not having a drink in Italy, in, 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 in Tuscany, in the mountains, where they're basically famous for like, the best like wine, and not having a bottle. Oh, I can't tell you how hard it's been. It's taken every bit of my resolve to resist. And it's our 10 year wedding anniversary. It's our 10 year anniv wedding anniversary. We're in Tuscany. If I do relapse, if I do relapse, I'll let everyone know. I don't want to be like a preachy twat and then at the same time like lie about it. I need, I need to be honest. One of the things that you and I have said since we finished, like since we stopped drinking was if we were to drink again, it would have to add to the moment and it couldn't be a stress drink and it mm. couldn't be a numbing out drink. It would be a celebratory drink. Here's a, mm. is it shut? Yeah, shut. Um, so for me, I'm like, well, this is the perfect time. <laughs> but I don't want to like... Yeah, but I was supposed to do a thousand days. <laughs> yeah, you idiot. She's got a nice bum, isn't she, Grey? We're going to head back to the car now. Hopefully, try and find somewhere that is going to sell some kind of food, pasta or anything. Because I do not want to deal with 200 ki hungry kids and a hungry wife. Hungry wife's probably the worst part. Hannah hungry. Oh God. <sighs> she should be banned under the Geneva Convention. You've got to feed that girl. If you don't feed her, it's just like chaos. Oh, don't, I'm getting PTSD thinking about it. The two major lessons I learned in our first few days in Italy is A, make sure you know it's going to be a bank holiday so you can get supplies in because they go into full lockdown. And secondly, you should definitely learn some basic Italian when you visit because I learned the hard way when hiring a car. Because when I said to the lady, can we please hire a car? What she must have thought I said was, please may we hire something that we can all sit in that's powered by a fucking dandelion. And then she handed me the keys to a Fiat 500. This bit's, this bit's, that bit's supposed to be the easy bit though. Oh, I smell that clutch, boys. Okay, just <laughs> It's so gutless that it can't, I have to I have to park down the mountain. It doesn't even have the guts to get up the mountain. I basically burnt out the clutch and like smoke just started bellowing out of it and the stench is just disgusting. And it's like, it just cannot even get up like a little incline of a hill. And now I've got to hike up the hill because it hasn't even got the guts to get me up the hill. That in the rain now, I've got to hike up the hill because my car hasn't, it can't, hasn't got the balls to get up there. I hate Fiat 500s with a burning, searing passion. It's just a disgusting car. Oh, that feels better. Thanks a lot, Fiat 500, you piece of crap. And now, tomorrow, when we leave here, I've got to basically bring my suitcases down a mountain because this hasn't got the guts to get up there to get my suitcases. So I now have to bring all the suitcases down to it because it can't get me up the mountain. Oh, God, I hate it. It's sport. My ass. That is not sport. There's nothing sporty about this piece of crap. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, off. 
I, I think this would be perfect if it was just like for a couple or something like that. If you you and you if you were into reading and writing, you had like you just wanted to come somewhere a bit like remote. With kids, it's a little bit different. Like you really need someone for the kids to run around and kind of you know like a pool or something for them to jump in and stuff like that, or like just a park nearby or a beach or something like that they can run around in because there's not that really there's not much stuff for them to do here. So yeah, it'll be good to change change uh, our environment tomorrow. That's for sure. Yeah. Living up a mountain for a few days was a majestic experience and stepping out onto that balcony every day and being greeted by that vista was almost worth the near-death driving experience. If I was a Gen Zer, I'd probably describe it using an adjective like smashing or pucker or ruddy ace, but I'm not. I'm basically a boomer, so I just slide out an iPad and just quietly take a photo of it. As the sun set on our final evening of our Italian mountain adventure, we both realized that as much as we loved the romantic idea of a secluded mountain life is not something we feel ready for, not yet anyway. Maybe one day when I look down and I see Hannah and I wearing a matching pair of these, then we'll know it's time. But until then, we're gonna keep searching. <laughs> In our next video, we'll be trading in the tranquil serenity of mountain life for the vibrant pulse of city life, exploring iconic landmarks and immersing ourselves in the Italian metropolitan style of life. Hopefully then, we'll find the answer to the burning question we came here for. Should we move to Italy? <laughs>